Hi folks, um, I was asked if I was going to do a tutorial on something, and since I'm home with a bad toothache, um, I figured I might as well do it. My voice might sound a little bit weird, because I've, I've been in uh, a lot of hurt, and nothing seems to be taking care of it. So anyway, I thought I'd show you something to do in Photoshop Elements. This can also be done in um, uh, oh, GIMP, or really in a lot of photo editors, especially if it has a good... Uh, selection tool, which is why I prefer Photoshop Elements. Um, but this is what we're going to create. It's a, a photo popping out of the frame. Um, I chose this one simply because it is easier to show you in a short amount of time, but there are um, a little bit more intricate ones too. Like that, or like that. So you can do these pretty simply in not much time, and we'll get started here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, raw image, which is this, this is something I took this spring while walking in my neighborhood, and we're going to open that up in Photoshop. Um, and real quick, we're going to make two copies of this, and I just drag them down to this thing here, which makes a copy of of the layers, and we'll take the top copy, and we're going to go ahead and select this flower. That's, this is why I prefer Photoshop, because I really like the selection tool. It just makes it very easy to do. Very quick. Smooth. Um, I think I want to get that too. First we'll get rid of this bit of the selection. And let's add this little uber over here. Okay, and then right click, choose layer via copy. And then we have our, our nice little layer, which is an extra layer. Then, below that layer and above the layer beneath it, we want to create a new blank layer, which I just select the layer beneath it, and I come over here and press the Create New Layer button, and I've got a blank layer here. Now I go ahead and use our rectangular marquee to select an area that we want to appear as a photograph. So, I just tend to kind of choose like that, make it pretty basic, um, get as much or as little as you want in there. Go ahead and keep that selection, and we're still on the blank layer here. I'm going to go to Edit, Stroke Outline Selection. I like white, so I always choose white. We're stroking inside. This is a very large picture, um, so I'm using 75 width. Um, we could go for a little smaller here, just we'll, we'll choose, eh, let's do 60. And um, if you want, if you want this photograph, I'll go ahead and, and include a link to it where I have it on the internet so that you can do this along with me if you'd like. And we just go ahead and choose select, and there we go. And you can see, you can already see how the photograph appears to be popping out of the frame. But we want to turn that one off for now. Turn bottom, the very bottom layer off, and because we're going to erase this layer, we need to unselect, deselect, and for this I'm going to choose a pretty large eraser brush because, oops, I still got a layer on here. What layer do we have on oh, the very bottom? Probably made one extra. So, and as long as we just don't erase anything within the little frame that we've created we're cool. Like there, I just screwed that up, so edit undo eraser. And we're just trying to make it appear like the photograph is really just what's in that, that photo frame that we've created. I'm probably using way too big a brush, but I'm lazy, I don't want to I'll have to switch the size of the brush in a second here. I'm going to shrink her down. I'll use the bracket key to do that. Actually, this is probably good. Talking seems to be making me think about my tooth less, so... Maybe I'll get another stupid tutorial from Halby. Who knows? Alrighty, so now, if we turn on that upper layer, you'll see we've got our photo pop.
popping out of the frame, which is very cool. And what I do at this point is I merge that down to the white frame, merge down, and I also merge it down to the inside of that photograph. We've erased everything else. So that becomes its own separate entity. Now, I create another blank layer. I take this layer, create a blank layer, and both these layers are really just savings of the picture. I don't know why I did that, but in this blank layer, what we want to do is create a, a I like a textured background. So, um, but I usually, generally, like to choose a color from the picture to create that background. So, take your pen and kind of. I mean, I in my last one I used this as a guide, and you can really do whatever you want if you prefer a different contrasting color you could do that um, we could even just so you can see as long as I'm here let's take a pink a red whatever color that is and we'll try that too and I don't like it as much so I'm going to go back to the screen and we can also take this layer here and move it to wherever and so, I mean sometimes I actually kind of like them kind of off kilter but you can center it do whatever you want, really. Um, and somehow I got stuck and I didn't change my color of my background to a background that I like. What do I do? Oh. Okay. Let me book it. There we go. And I like a texture, so I go up here to filter, texture. Um, any of these textures work great. I like mosaic tiles. You can make them as large or as small to grout with however you want it really. It's, it's all up to you. It's all up to your taste. Um, which is okay. And now to make it kind of pop more, we want to take our flower picture layer and add a shadow and then pick the FX button there and kind of adjust to where you want. What I try to do is sort of picture where the sun is coming from and to me the sun is sort of hitting this way so I'm going to adjust my shadow like that. I like to make it big so it stands out more. Make the distance even greater. Turn the opacity down so it looks a little bit more realistic. And that's all she wrote. If you want, if this looks a little bit too much background for you, go ahead and merge this down and crop it to whatever you like. Ta da! So, anyway, I hope that was helpful. It's really easy, um, but the results, again, are um, really quite nice. I've been real impressed with the ones I've done, and see this is the one I did earlier. And you can see it's pretty close to the one we just did now. So anyway, that's how you make a photo popping out of frame in Photoshop Elements, regular Photoshop, or GIMP if you just spend a little bit more time with your selection tool. I haven't figured out a way to do it in Sumo yet, but um, I'm sure there is. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Memorial Day. Take care.